Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Namoli Family Stadium, home of your number 15 ranked University of Tampa Spartans. Today, the Spartans welcome the number 19 ranked New York Institute of Technology Bears. And now, here are today's lineup. We with the Bears of New York Institute of Technology who enter today's game with a record of 4 and 2. Attacker, a sophomore from Medford, New York, number three, Lexi Ruiz. Defender, a junior from Safeville, New York, number four, Aaron Lankowitz. Attacker, a senior from Rocky Point, New York, number six, Alyssa Milano. Attacker, a sophomore from Kings Park, New York, number seven, Shannon Donovan. Attacker, a senior from Port Jefferson, New York, number 10, Carrie Nanecki. Defender, a senior from Manhattan, New York, number 12, Anne-Marie Arpino. Midfielder, a junior from Seapock, New York, number 13, Kim Geiger. Defender, a junior from Lake Ron Tacoma, New York, number 14, Brooke Basso. Defender, a senior from Wontag, New York, number 18, Kelly McQuail. Defender, a freshman from Oceanside, New York, number 19, Michaela Clem. Defender, a freshman from Lindenhurst, New York, number 22, Ashley Chigeka. And goalkeeper, a junior from Selden, New York, number 29, Ashley Miller. 
The Bears are coached by Kerry Hendress, assisted by Jackie Arlena, Ralph Vigiano, Rachel Folstein, Emily Pepe, and Taylor David. Sophomore from Kings Park, New York, number nine, Kristen Frizzle. Goalkeeper, a freshman from Evergreen, Colorado, number 10, Bridget Sutter. Attacker, a junior from Arnold, Maryland, number 13, Rachel Crawford. Defender, a junior from Baltimore, Maryland, number 15, Emmy Catania. Midfielder, a senior from Wayne, Pennsylvania, number 16, Shannon Sweeney. Defender, a sophomore from Millstone, New Jersey, number 21, Alexa Scadillo. Midfielder, a junior from Colorado Springs, Colorado, number 25, Allie Poplar. Attacker, a freshman from Parkton, Maryland, number 28, Graham Eber. Defender, a senior from Annapolis, Maryland, number 32, Emily Stevenson. And attacker, a sophomore from Berwyn, Pennsylvania, number 33, Maggie Gladden. Tampa is led by head coach Kelly Gallagher. She's assisted by Lisa Peltramello and Chelsea Treves. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask you to please rise as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Complex. The Tampa Spartans coming into tonight's game, ranked number 15, taking on the NYIT Bears. I'm Bruce Morsniak here to call the action for you on this Tuesday evening, where we are in West Central Florida on the grounds of the University of Tampa campus, and a game time temperature of 72 degrees. An exciting night of lacrosse ahead for sure, as number 15. 
post number 19, and the home Spartans in particular, coming in on a six game winning streak. That's right, they started the season one and two, and have not been defeated since February 22nd. And for the opponent tonight, NYIT, they come in on the heels of a big 20 to six victory this past Saturday. And that got them back into the win column after they lost in overtime last Thursday. So the Spartans were all white tonight. Starting off going from left to right. For NYIT, their school colors are blue and gold. And those uniforms neither look, neither look blue nor gold to me, maybe sort of a gray. Uh, they will be going right to left here in this first half. Our starting goaltender for the Spartans this evening, once again, is Bridget Sutter, who comes in with a 9.20 goals against average. And for the visitors, Ashley Miller, starting between the pipes. She has a 9.73 goals against average. And this is the Spartans with the game's opening possession. And they have it down deep in behind the Bears' net. And that's Rachel Crawford. Moving it up top to Amanda Rom. Those are UT's number one and number two point leaders thus far this season. Rom with 27 and Crawford with 25. And up top with it is Rom. Over to Shannon Sweeney. Puts it down in behind the net to Maggie Gladden. The Spartans, this is the first time in the program history that they've been ranked. They came into the rankings at number 23 moved up to 17 and now entering tonight, as I mentioned, they are number 15. And they are still in control as Allie Poplar moves it over to her left. Pass in behind the net, Crawford working her way out in front, loses it and unable to pick it up. Three of them battle for it and it's still loose. And over to help out is Amanda Rahm and the Spartans able to pick it back up Rom knocked the stick out of the hands of Aaron Lankowitz. And so UT maintains possession. That's Caroline Forster on the far side, and she throws it to an unattended quarter, and that one goes out of play. So NYIT will get their first possession of the game. And now they put it in play on the far side of the field. And it's dropped. And now picked up by a Bears teammate on the run. That's Angela Cuevas. Excuse me, Angelina Cuevas. And she breaks across the Spartans line. Her pass down into the corner. That's Carrie Janineki. And now pass up top, Ashley Chica. Bears getting set up. Now here's a shot coming. Setter makes the save on the shot by Alyssa Milano. And recovered by UT. And a whistle goes. And it looks like they'll turn the ball back over to the Bears. And they have to wait for all the players to come back who had started heading up field thinking that it was UT's possession. Now Emily Stevenson gets chased defensively behind the UT net as the Bears continue to move it. It's Kim Geiger. Her pass over to Milano. And that one connects in front looking, weaving her way through traffic. Zneneki. And you see the whistle stopping play there. We are just three minutes and one second into this contest. This is the sixth in a seven game homestand yeah. for UT as the Bears throw that one away and we'll turn it over. This homestand started back on March 5th and wraps up this Friday night when Alabama Huntsville comes to town and then the Spartans only go on the road for one game before coming back here for two more. 
In the meantime, they're trying to get it out of their own end. And Kayla Kosubinski gets around a couple of defenders and crosses midfield. And is being watched by three Bears players now and gets it up ahead to Claire Swanson. Swanson across the Bears line drops it and unable to pick it back up. And a pair of number 12s were battling for it. Well, Anne-Marie Ardito came away with it, but then Claire Swanson gets it back, and now the Spartans able to push it behind the Bears' net. Maggie Gladden back there. Gladden skips out in front, wants to shoot, and was checked. So she'll send a pass over to Mallory Wines. Now Swanson throws a pass down to Crawford, and now Rahm on this side to Mallory Wines again. That's Swanson up top. Blair Swanson, the team leader in goals in 2018. She has 15, followed closely by Caroline Forster and Kayla Kosubinski, each with 14. And now Crawford finds Rahm up top. Amanda Rahm skips in, a pass in the middle, doesn't connect with Swanson. And the Spartans will turn it over as the Bears in transition here. Kosubinski gives chase. There's a pass that connects up ahead with Lexi Ruiz being chased by Emily Stevenson, and now watch out Paige Johnson chasing her down, and they both go down. And possession remains with NYIT. They hail from Old Westbury, New York. Probably happy to be down here in West Central Florida with the weather that's hitting, we're about to hit the Northeast. And as I mentioned, the game time temperature here in Tampa of 72 degrees. As the Bears have it in the near corner, there's a pass. And looking for room, Donovan and a bunch of Spartans defenders collapse around her. And they have to pass it down in behind the net. Up top with it now. Cuevas with a little bit of room. And it's not free from her, but hold on a stoppage in play. And that call against UT, so a free position attempt coming up for the Bears. And there it is, they score! Five minutes and 48 seconds into the game, NYIT gets on the board first. A free position attempt pays off. No, I guess the goaltender, well, they didn't score. I'm calling a goal that apparently is not counting. So good news for UT, although they're going to miss this one here. And so now they'll give the ball right back to the Bears, who will put it in play in the person of Gary Janineke. And now this is Kim Geiger. You see her with Big brace on her right leg. And there's a pass that misses. It's on the ground, picked up by the Bears in behind the UT net. Now right out in front, and a save made there by Sutter. A shot taken by Alyssa Milano. The 5'8 senior from Rocky Point, New York. And now Sutter puts it in play with a pass that connects up ahead with Shannon Sweeney. She's going to be chased from behind. Sweeney on the run, crosses midfield. Sweeney looking for an outlet and finds it as the Spartans move it up ahead. Caroline Forrester pass over to Rachel Crawford. Crawford on the move, sends a pass in behind the Bears net. This is Natalie Carraway. Carraway looking. Three Spartans players, a lot of movement in front of the net. And Forrester pushes it over. And quickly into the corner go the Spartans. This is Sweeney behind the net. And now on this side to Lauren McNeil. Caraway, quick ball movement here by UT on this trip down the field. Caraway looking behind the net. Sent it to McNeil who missed it. It's on the ground. Chased by the Bears. And I was about to say they'll come away with it, but it's still loose. And finally, picked up there by Brute Basso. Brute Basso got the 
ground ball, and now taking it ahead is Anne Marie Tardito. And there's a pass that connects. A good look in front. Shot and save made by Bridget Sutter. A nice stop. It looked like she got her left leg out to stop that one. And a good look at the net for NYIT. But so far, Bridget Sutter, four for four. The Spartans have not actually registered an official shot on goal yet. Here come the Bears again and hit the crossbar. And now there's another shot they score. Alyssa Milano finally beats Bridget Sutter. All kinds of hard work by the Bears, and their persistence pays off. Unassisted goal to New York Institute of Technologies, number six, Alyssa Milano. And as Milano, the Bears' leading goal scorer, picks up her 15th of the year. And that goal comes at the 8-17 mark. Walkabout Australian Cafe and Bakery is South Tampa's newest delight. Located at 627 South Howard, Walkabout features authentic meat pies, pastries, and down-under delights. Open Tuesday through Sunday at 10 a.m. Try us mates at Walkabout Cafe and Bakery. Now they Poplar to do the honors here for the Spartans on this draw against the same Alyssa Milano. And that one rolls free. Three of them battle for it. And now award possession to NYIT. The Milano goal unassisted. And now here she comes once again. In the corner now, they give it right back to her. And looking to shoot, nothing there. Good defense sliding over by UT and into a crowd. That one's going to go right to Bridget Sutter. And she'll hold in her crease. Looking to her left, there's Emily Stevenson connects with her. And now C Stevenson starts it up. Stevenson. Pass to Abby Kakanya. And Kakanya's attempt now gets picked up by Kosovinski. And Kakanya's going to get it back. And they try to chop at her, but play carries on as UT moves it deep into the Bears' end of the field. All the way behind the net, Rachel Crawford and Claire Swanson cuts through the slot. They're unable to get it to her. Lauren McNeil up top who winds over to Caraway. And now Swanson in the far corner as they push it behind the net. Gladden over on this side to Crawford to Kosubinski. Now back up to Wines, and a reset with McNeil up top. Caraway on the move. There's Claire Swanson now looking for something in the slot, and two Bears players there, Kosubinski, and not able to get a shot away, backs up, sends it over to Wines. And now right under the scoreboard, Rachel Crawford moves in behind the net. Crawford looking in front, and has to settle for Natalie Caraway up top, who starts her move. Caraway with a spin move finds two NYIT players there in outlets for Kosubinski. Nice spin move. And are they able to cause a turnover? Some strong defensive play there by the Bears. They do. And it's Kelly McQuail. And now the Spartans take back over. A heads up play there by Abby Kakanya as she races into the Bears' end of the field. And she. Leaves it for Lauren McNeil as she'll wait for her Spartans teammates to catch up. So the two teams give it away to one another. And we resume with the Spartans back in control right in front. And that one, ooh, that one rolls through the goal crease. Ashley Miller may have gotten a piece of the initial shot. And regardless, NYIT starts out of their own end now. They lead one to nothing. And now they're looking to cross midfield. Brooke Basso does so. Basso steps across the Tampa line and sends that one over for Angelina Cuevas. And turned over once again as the Spartans will try to start out. Rachel Crawford being watched by Milano. Crawford's pass is going to miss, and 
Boy, these two teams just keep giving the ball back to one another. NYIT will put it in play from the near sideline. The beauty of the empanada is its simplicity. Take any of your favorite foods and imagine them inside a pocket of homemade dough that is cooked perfectly until it is golden brown and piping hot. The empanadas at Mr. Empanada are a culinary treat with 10 locations around the city. Enjoy more table flavor at Mr. Empanadas. All right, fans, it's time for the press box Twitter trivia. Tonight's Twitter trivia question is, is all right. entering the yep. game, I have to go. New team comes here across first in half, goals. And the Bears, Who am I? I one to nothing. Be sure to tweet uh, your answers to Milano's ask for a good UT for your chance to win a prize courtesy of the press box. Tropical Smoothie Cafe's menu boasts bold, flavorful smoothies with a healthy appeal, all made to order from the freshest ingredients. Their toasted wraps, sandwiches, flatbreads, and bowls are made fresh with quality meats and cheeses, fresh produce, and flavorful sauces. Located downtown at 200 North Tampa, just around the corner from UT. We are in a timeout. Called by Bears head coach Kerry Andrus in her second season in that position. Spartans coming off that 17 to 14 victory over number 23 McKendry. Osiminski led the way with five goals mentioned earlier that she's tied for second on the Spartans in goal for 14. NYIT and four and two. Looking to build off of that Victory the other day, 20 to 6. Coming on Saturday at Holy Family. And here they are with an early 1 to nothing lead. And these are two teams that can score goals. NYIT is averaging exactly 17 goals a game. And for UT, an average of just under 14 goals a game. As play resumes here, the Bears in their own end. And they start it up the far sideline and now heading towards the middle of the field that's Brooke Basso and her pass up ahead to Geiger. A pair of 13s there as Geiger is chased by Rachel Crawford and carries on and this is Cuevas now and they look to get it back to her unable and so it's back with Geiger. Geiger up top now to Chaika changing hands Gives it back to Geiger again, down to Milano. And it's Cheka again, pass right out in front, and unable to get a shot off Cuevas, her pass missed, intended for Alexia Ruiz, and Sutter picks that one up. And a great freshman season for Bridget Sutter. As I mentioned in the beginning of the broadcast, a 9.20 goals against average. And she has done the lion's share of the goaltending for the Spartans this season. She has played all but about 77 minutes of UT's 540 minutes this season. As her teammates have it down in the NYIT end of the field, this is Allie Poplar to Gladden, over to Forrester, and down to Crawford in the corner. As she walks in behind the Bears net now tries to come out the other side and will relay it back up top to Amanda Rahm. Over to Poplar, Ali Poplar on the move, has to back up. Poplar looking and no open white jerseys and has to send it back to Rahm. Now Rahm will throw it all the way to the back line and Rachel Crawford goes to work from back there. Up top, Poplar looking for some room, cuts through, and sticks get up, and the official there to whistle that one as Allie Poplar took that one into traffic and had at least two, maybe three Bears players with their sticks up high. 
So Allie Poplar here takes the shot and scores. She beats mm -hmm. Ashley Miller in the five hole. And the Spartans able to tie it up at the 13.56 mark of the first half. <coughs> goal Tampa number 25, Ellie Poplar. It's her 11th goal of the season. And obviously that one is unassisted. Spartans finally get on the board. DP Doe delivers cheesy happiness on and around college campuses, including UT. For calzones, wings, and breadsticks, order online at dpdoe.com. Open late. Amanda Rahm and Alyssa Milano on this draw and recovered for NYIT by Kelly McQuail as she crosses the Spartans line. Quail, pass over to Ruiz. Ruiz down in the far corner being watched by Emily Stevenson. Ruiz can't shake her. Sends a pass back in behind the net. Now they get it in the near corner. Milano to Ashley Chayka. And now to Geiger. Pass back over, and now they try to get it in the middle. They do, and Bridget Sutter there to make the save, although the Bears pick up the rebound, and they send it up top once again to Geiger. And that's Cuevas. Looking for Geiger, sends it to the corner instead to Ruiz. Ruiz in behind the net. Pass over now for Zanecki. And dropping it, Ruiz, and two players go down, and the official stops play. We have just passed the halfway point of the first half. We wait for Lexi Ruiz, who in that pileup somehow came out of her shoe. And the official watches her get ready and is now satisfied and will blow the whistle for play to resume, and it does. And Zanecki gives it quickly to Milano, who sends it up top to Chaika. I'll try the far side once again. Pass by Cuevas into the corner. And that one misses, <coughs> intended for Geiger. Picked up by Chaika as Paige Johnson gave chase. Now a pass and moving in, and no shot opportunity there for Geiger. <coughs> Tries a spin move, there's a pass, and doesn't connect. And the official blowing the whistle, another stoppage here. And Alexis Scadillo going off the field. And let's see if perhaps we're going to have the first penalty of the game. Indeed, Alexis Scadillo sitting over in the penalty area on the far side of the field. Is coming with 14.22 remaining here in the first half. Whether you're a competitive athlete wanting to tone up or just love flavorful, healthy food, rebuilt meals are built to feed your body with proper nutrients that will fuel your active lifestyle. Enjoy fitness inspired meal plans with rebuilt meals. Visit rebuiltmeals.com. <laughs> So the Bears, as play resumes, after Alexis Scadillo was called for a hit to the head. And there's a pass that misses. It's chased and picked up there by Milano. Bears working on this two minute power play as Geiger. <coughs> Pushes it over and now a pass into the corner. Falling for it behind the net is Nanecki. And she's watched by two Spartans players. Keep in mind that UT is short a player already to begin with, with Alexis Scadillo serving that two minute hit to the head penalty. And 
here it is back with Milano again. Milano tried to turn the corner. And chased by Shannon Sweeney. He's going to take it all the way in behind the Spartans' net. Pass quickly in front, and Sutter gets a piece of that one off the stick of Kim Geiger. The shot goes out of play. And so the Spartans put it back into play here. Winding down, or trying to wind down, this Alexis Cadillo penalty. 23 seconds left in it. Sutter with a pass up ahead to Kosubinski. And now she'll send it over. Emily Stevenson pushes it up ahead, a pass that misses. But now it's controlled there by Rachel Crawford. It was initially intended for Mallory Wines. Three seconds, two seconds, one second, and the Spartans back at full strength. As one of the UT players goes to the ground and slow in picking herself up. <coughs> and it looks like it's Rachel Crawford as she gets the free position attempt and bounces that one wide. And the Bears have the rebound, but three Spartans <coughs> players there. Although they do advance it up ahead and now crossing the line. Well, now causing the turnover. Actually, Chaika went down. The Spartans pick it up and they break in as Swanson has it. Player Swanson dodges one defender, bounces and scores! <laughs> Some good old-fashioned hard work by Claire Swanson, getting around the defender and putting that one past Ashley Miller. And UT has their first lead of the game. It's 2-1. 11 to go here in the first half. Claire Swanson is her team leading at 16 for the season. Momentarily, we will we'll be looking at a graphic that we have on the board of a distorted sponsor image. It will be guess the correct Clean answer. The cafe located at 3838 Neptune Avenue and open until 7. It's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. All right, Will, is this number one, Nashville Subaru, number two, Clean Eats, or number three, Rebuilt Meals? Now here is Emily Stevenson. Emily Stevenson with the pass. Now Poplar has the ball. 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 Poplar she is the leader on the Bears in draw controls with 34 entering tonight's game. <laughs> and that one rolls free, and Milano looks like she's going to somehow come out of the pack with it, but instead it's her teammate, Dan Marie Ardito. And Ardito sends it ahead to his connection, connects with Milano. As Ardito makes the long run towards the sideline. And is replaced by Angelina Cuevas, who now has the ball on the far side of the field. And pass it bounces over to Geiger. So now for Chaika. As Cuevas tries to work her way down the far side of the field. Now towards the back line, being chased by Emily Stevenson. And the official there on the spot to blow the whistle. <laughs> against Stevenson, and so Cuevas will now put it in play and does, gives it to Ruiz, and sent back for Chaika, who sends it right back down low to Ruiz, pass in front, oh, hit the goalpost, and then the rebound, sent wide, the shot by Shannon Donovan, possession remains with the Bears, however, and now here's Geiger, Kim Geiger, and watched loosely by Scadillo, and now Milano is chasing her with Abby Kakanya. Now Geiger will try. Geiger a pass to the far side to Ruiz. Ruiz pass into the corner as they take it in behind the UT net. Cuevas sends it over to Milano. 
and the bears can't seem to penetrate the slot here as they're working it around the perimeter and have to send it back up top once again to Chaika. Now here's Geiger. And chased there by two Spartans players. Carries on and Bridget Sutter knocking that one down. And so a good defensive stand by UT on that trip down the field by NYIT. As there's a pass that connects with Scadillo. She'll play it back to her goaltender. And now Bridget Sutter being chased. Sutter has it knocked loose, wide open net. And they shoot, oh, and a save by Sutter who got back just in time. And it goes out, the possession remains with the Bears. Anxious moments there around the UT net. And now right out in front, Milano scores. She was left unchecked and all Melissa, Alyssa Milano had to do was toss that one in the open side of the net and the game is back into a tie. We're 2-2 two to two with 9.05 to be here in the first half. Alyssa Milano. At Jersey Mike's, they offer a sub above with the nearest location at 2121 West Kennedy in Tampa. Jersey Mike's, a sub above. <laughs> So Alyssa Milano picks up her 16th goal of the season, and now she goes out for this draw against Amanda Rahm. Draw controls to this point 3 to 1 in favor of NYIT. And I mentioned before about the teams giving the ball away to one another. There have been a combined total of 19 turnovers already in just the first 20 minutes. And the Spartans with it now in behind the Bears net. Natalie Carraway working her way out in front. Carraway here on the near side. Pass to Sweeney. Sweeney over to Forrester. McNeil to Forrester, back to Caraway again. And now to Shannon Sweeney, down to Gladden. UT fell behind one to nothing before scoring the next two goals. And the Bears have just scored to tie it at two to two as Allie Poplar carries on, sending it over to Forrester. Forrester, heavy defense there. Good pressure being applied by Anne-Marie Ardito as Poplar has it now. Over to Forrester. Forrester tries to get around Ardito and can't. And now moves it over for Shannon Sweeney. Back to Forrester again and to Sweeney one more time and she drops it. And Sweeney and the official there on the spot with the call against <coughs> Kelly McCoyle. Sweeney gets the green light from the official, puts it in play, gets it to Poplar. Allie Poplar on the run. Poplar puts her shoulder down, can't go past the defender, and now it's dropped by Lauren McNeil. She picks it back up and heads behind the net, and the shot clock expires, so the ball will be turned over to NYIT. Courtyard by Marriott, simply refreshing, located at 3805 West <coughs> Cypress in Tampa, an official host hotel of University of Tampa Athletics. McQuayle on the run now, crosses midfield, and pushes it up ahead now to Milano. Connects in the corner with Zanecki. Back to Milano, and up top, Juggled by Chaika, and now Geiger sends a pass over to Cuevas, gets it back to Geiger. This is Chaika, and outlets for Cuevas, fakes a pass, and now sends one right in the middle, and that might have hit her teammate in the leg, and it bounces right back out as the Bears able to control. 
Geiger, you want to send it in the slot, a high traffic area, and no gray shirts in there right now. As Alyssa Milano now was wide open on the far side, and there's a pass that misses, and Milano will chase that one down. Alyssa Milano, both of her team's goals, there's a pass that misses, and so UT will take over as Kristen Frizzola puts it in and gives it to her goaltender. Sutter sends it over to Scadillo, and Alexa Scadillo finds another gear. Now pushes it up ahead to Kanya. Over for Maggie Gladden. Gladden on the run, has one defender to beat, takes it outside, and down to the end line, Amanda Rom. Rom bounces out on the other side. And that pass was intended for Kayla Kosubinski, but picked off. The Bears head back the other way. And now there's a pass quickly up ahead. That one won't connect. And UT will get it right back as Kristen Frizzold ducks under a check and sends it ahead to Swanson to Amanda Rahm now. Rahm on the run across the Bears line. Amanda Rahm is knocked down, and they turn it over as Amanda Rahm checks herself out while the play heads back the other way. And now the Spartans. Well, Abby Kakanya thought that she forced a turnover. They call that one against her, and play carries on as Brooke Basso pushes it down into the corner. Milano sends it back up top, and here's Basso once again. To Milano again. And now Basso will try the other side. On the run now, Cuevas being checked there by Abby Kakanya. And again, and now a pass right in the middle. Shot and Sutter saw that one all the way. And a nice save there against Kim Geiger. And Sutter leaves it for Scadillo. Scadillo legging it up the far side of the field, right in front of her own sideline, and able to skip past two Bears defenders, and now a third. And it's taken over there by Kosubinski. Over here to Claire Swanson. Right in front, and Eber takes a shot, and that one goes out of play as Amanda Rahm will put it back in. <coughs> Been a fast-moving first half as we're already down to just 3.47 remaining. And that's Rachel Crawford with it. Crawford looking for an open teammate. Carries on behind the net. And a pass to Maggie Gladden. Gladden with a little extra bounce in her step. Takes it back behind the net. And as the goaltender Miller watches her circle the cage, Kasubinski with it. Two defenders on her. She's going to try it again. It's on the ground. And a bunch of them battle for it. And the Bears come out of the pack with it. And starting back the other way, Brooke Basso on the run. Up ahead to Milano. Milano. There to meet and check her was Abby Kakanya. And Milano will hold on to it as it's down in the corner now with Zanecki. Pass in front, they score! Shannon Donovan rips that one over the left shoulder of Bridget Sutter. And with 2.54 left here in the first half, the Bears a 3 to 2 lead. Goal. If you're watching our broadcast from our campus, call Pizza Hut at 254 to get your pizza delivered to UT today. Shannon Donovan getting the goal, and Zanecki gets the assist. Shannon Donovan gets her eighth goal of the season. Timeout, Tampa. We're going to get a timeout call here by Tampa head coach Kelly Gallagher. There's obviously lots of lacrosse left to play here, but for two teams who I had mentioned, Average scoring a combined total of almost 31 goals a game. They're less than three minutes away from halftime, but they've combined to score only five. And in terms of the defense, specifically the goaltenders, the Spartans 
have just three shots on goal. Well, they've certainly made them count. Whereas the Bears have ten shots on goal. So Bridget Sutter has been very active at that end of the field. Fans, are you thirsty? Grab a Pepsi, the official Spartan soft drink. And be reminded that at halftime, the audio portion of our broadcast does go silent. Do not adjust your viewing device. Just set a timer at that point for 10 minutes. We'll be back in time for the call of the second half here on TampaSpartans.tv. I'm Bruce Warsniak. Glad to be calling the action for you here on this Tuesday evening. Between two nationally ranked opponents, number 15, UT, and number 19, NYIT. Watching the timeout expire. That was called by UT head coach Kelly Gallagher and the team's breaking the huddle. The temperature is now at 73. We were at 72 when we started at 8 o'clock. The game was pushed back to an 8 o'clock start time instead of 7.30 because there was a tornado watch in the area. The weather has been just fine since the game's opening faceoff. Let's give a big shout out to Drs. Selman and Gasser and Florida Board of Peak Tech Institute and their sports medicine team for keeping our players safe and providing athletic training services and medical care to University of Tampa student athletes. And once again, we will get Amanda Rahm and Alyssa Milano for the draw, as we've seen a handful of times already. And Rahm able to come away with it. They do blow a whistle against the Bears. So it will, parentheses, still be UT ball as Maggie Gladden with it now. A pass into the corner to Crawford. Rachel Crawford. To Rom. Rom looked down low, sent it to her right over to Poplar, who pushes it to Crawford in the corner and now in behind the net. Quickly around the other side. Maggie Gladden looking at Graham Eber and now finally gives it to her. And Eber opts for Caroline Forrester and it's back towards the corner as Shannon Sweeney has it down there and will outlet back up top to Forrester again. Eber the other side to Gladden. Maggie Gladden as UT has fallen into a one goal deficit here, three to two. Eber, a pass down low, and Gladden unable to get a shot off. Sends it to Caroline Forrester instead. Over to Allie Poplar. Down low, that's Rachel Crawford. And now on the run, quickly here's a pass, and Gladden unable to get a shot off. Sends it to Sweeney. And now Crawford behind the net once again. Crawford to pass out in front, doesn't connect, it was intended for Allie Poplar. And the shot clock expires, so the ball is turned over to NYIT. Stay at Crown Plaza Hotels and Resorts, the place to meet. And the Bears quickly across the UT line, that's Brooke Basso. And her pass goes into the corner to Snedeka. One minute on the clock. Being watched closely down there by Kristen Frizzol. And Shannon Donovan pushes it over. Chica sends it in the corner. Now a pass in front. And <laughs> is intended for Alyssa Milano. You can see there to take it away. And indeed, the official blowing the whistle. Looks like that one was against Lexi Ruiz. And so UT with 42.8 seconds left here in the first half. The chance, oh, heads up play there. And indeed, we're going to call that one against Anne Marie Ardito. As play carries on, the Spartans advance it, or do they? Shannon Sweeney having trouble finding the handle and taken away by the Bears. 25 seconds left. Quickly now, Alexi Ruiz on the run. She's being chased. Ruiz a pass and the Spartans able to get the turnover as Ali Poplar heading out of her own end. Poplar just 10 seconds left and a pass misses on the far side of the field. And just 3.2 seconds left. The Bears will not get a shot off as the horn goes 
to end the first half of play. So the visitors as we go into halftime. The official chariot of the Spartans is Mark's first class coach. If you need to charter a bus, go online to www.marksfirstclass.com. That's Marks with a C. So do set a timer for 10 minutes and join us back on the other side for the call of the second half here on tampaspartans.tv. <laughs>
entrepreneurial complex on the grounds of the University of Tampa campus. We're just about set to start the second half of play here as the visiting NYIT Bears come in ranked number 19, hold a 3 to 2 lead over the Tampa Spartans, who are ranked number 15. It's 4 2 NYIT against 7 2 Spartans. As I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, are looking to extend that impressive curve wing streak to seven games. And for the Bears, they are looking to build on the 20 to 6 victory that they posted on Saturday. They opened the season with a defeat at the hands of Georgian Court and proceeded to win their next three. As we get set to start the second half here, the teams, of course, have changed ends. So the Spartans now going right to left. As Amanda Rahm out there on this draw. And draw controls were 3-3 three to three in the first half. And the number that really jumps out, seven saves for Bridget Sutter, as opposed to just one save in the first half for Ashley Miller, which, yes, means that shots on goal we're 10 to 3 in favor of the Bears. And NYIT with the first possession of the second half. Has it here in the near corner. And this is Kim Geiger with it. The Bears, they got two goals in the first half from Alyssa Milano and one from Shannon Donovan. The Spartans, meanwhile, Got goals from Allie Poplar and Claire Swanson, and that's where things stand. No assists ended out on the UT side, and just one assist for the Bears at going to Carries Nineke. And Allie Poplar missing that pass, and now able to pick it up. And she gets away from a check by Ashley Chayka, although the official does blow that one. And now play does resume as Poplar sends it over here to Caroline Forrester. Forrester, watch out, she's being chased by Lexi Ruiz and speeds ahead for the pass to Rachel Crawford. Now down to the end line, that's Natalie Carraway in behind Ashley Miller. Carraway to Forrester, and now up top to Rom. Over to Poplar. And in the corner, that's Rachel Crawford. Crawford up to Poplar. Ashley Poplar on the run and being watched by two defenders now finds the open Caroline Forrester and Forrester is still looking for room and good defensive play there by Brooke Basso as Graham Eber takes over. Eber is bumped, pass inside for Sweeney and a whistle there going against the Bears. And so an opportunity now for Shannon Sweeney, two minutes and five seconds into the second half. Sweeney takes it towards the net, scores! Shannon Sweeney at the 208 mark of the second half ties the game at three to three. And does so by way of her seventh goal of the season. And that one obviously will be unassisted. Goal Tampa number 16, Shanty unassisted. The Barnes & Noble Campus Store has everything you team in one place, located in the Vaughn Center, first floor, open Monday through Saturday, or shop online at www.utampa.dncollege.com. Draw at midfield. This is Amanda Rahm once again. And in case you're wondering, she came into this game second on the Spartans in draw controls with 21. And was against Alyssa Milano once again. In possession to UT as Alexis Gadillo starts it up the field. To Graham Eber. Now to Natalie Carraway in the corner. Carraway taking it. In behind the Bears net, pops out the other side. Caraway looking in front. 
Tried to connect with Crawford, couldn't get it to her, but Allie Poplar is there. And Caraway up top to Forrester. Now over to Graham Ebert. In the corner, that's Sweeney. Sends it behind the net, and they quickly push it out to Natalie Caraway on the other side and back up top with Allie Poplar. Looking, opts for Forrester. Forrester wants to go past the defender, does, and a shot the save is made there by Miller. And the loose ball now goes back to Miller again. And Ashley Miller will settle it down. <coughs> and the referee directing Rachel Crawford to call against her. And now Miller flips that one up ahead to Michaela Clem. And now Brooke Basso being chased sends it over to the far side of the field as the Bears trying to get out of their own end as Aaron Lankowitz had to step under a check from Amanda Rom. The Bears quickly up ahead and a pass in front, Milano, and the sticks come up on her. Emily Stevenson was there defensively for the Spartans. And so Alyssa Milano, who as I mentioned has two of the Bears three goals. Foul on Emily Stevenson. And so Milano with an opportunity takes a shot and Sutter stops that one. And Bridget Sutter outlets over to her right where Kristen Frizzol needs help and gives it back to her goaltender. And Sutter looks at this side of the field at Alexis Cadillo and now gives it to Scadillo. Five foot three sophomore. She speeds up across her own line, and that one's going to be picked off by Milano. Alyssa Milano, they have a two on one. Milano breaks down the pass. Shot coming. Bridget Sutter makes the save, and the rebound is controlled by the Spartans. What a great save there as Bridget Sutter stops carries Naneki on a two on one break. Yeah. Call against UT here, but. Big stop there by the freshman, Bridget Sutter, and now they score. So after all that, the Bears is able to convert after all four minutes and ten seconds into this second half, and they take the lead four to three. Goal, NYIT, number ten, Kerry Nanecki, unassisted. So it's Nanecki, who already had an assist in this game, now gets into the goal column. And that's her eighth of the season. Walter's Press Box is Tampa's favorite place to watch the big game and party. Press Box 222 South Dale Mabry. Now we'll get Allie Poplar this time around taking the draw for the home team. Plus one. And Claire Swanson chases it down for the Spartans. And indeed, the whistle goes against the other number 12, Anne Marie Ardito. And so, possession to the Spartans, although they quickly turn it over. And I talked about the two teams. Average combined total, 31 goals per game, and it combined for 34 turnovers already in just 35 minutes of play as the Bears. And going down was Lexi Ruiz, and the official was right there to call that one against Emily Stevenson. And now Ruiz... <coughs> awaiting the official's whistle. And there it is, playing it back for Geiger. Over to Milano, and back to Geiger again. Geiger starts her move down the slot, and a pass misses and goes out of play. Possession remains with NYIT, however. And 
And now a call against the Bears is going to give it over to UT. So the Spartans, who have just fallen behind, four to three. And now they, now there's whistles all over the place. The Spartans had tied the game up three to three to start the second half, and have just given up a goal to fall back behind by one, as was the case. It was three to two, our halftime score. And now UT starting out of their own end. On the run, that's Abby Kakanya crossing midfield. Kakanya across the Bears line. Taking it almost down the far side. And it leaves a pass as Kasubinski has it now. And watch out, Kasubinski pressured. And the official ducks out of the way as they cycle it around the perimeter down low. That's Natalie Carraway to Rachel Crawford. Winds to her right, Eber, and to Amanda Rom. Amanda Rom looking and has Rachel Crawford now gives it to her. Crawford is the defense almost daring her to try the slot. Crawford holds on to it and now leaves it for Eber. Graham Eber, nobody in front for UT. Now Rachel Crawford flashes through the goal crease. They can't get it to her. Eber over to her left to Mallory Wines, now in the corner, Caraway looking. She has Crawford behind the net and gives it to her, pass out in front, and it doesn't connect. The Bears, are they able to take it over? No. Claire Swanson had it, and now they're <coughs> basically kicking at it. Four of them back there, two from each team, and going down to the field was Amanda Rahm. And possession over to the Bears as the shot clock expired. And so putting it back into play for NYIT will be Brooke Basso as she sends it up ahead to Kelly McQuail and chased by Rom. Now in the middle of the field, Kim Geiger crossing midfield and chased by three UT players now. Mallory Wines there. And Geiger reaching down to just her knee brace. And a pass in front connects, and a stick up high there. Nothing called, and Shannon Donovan was taken down. And the Spartans got away with a high stick there. And now crossing the NYIT line, that's Maggie Gladden. Gladden pushes it into the corner, Caraway. And glancing over at the Bears' sideline to see if head coach Kerry Handris is animated at all after one of her players was taken down and no call was made. A shot there by the Spartans goes out of play. Possession remains with UT. And they put it back into play. It's Carly Vaccaro out on the field now. It's over in the other corner. And now up top with Allie Poplar. Caraway. Airway pass into the corner. Glad will push it behind the net. And now down behind the net. The fresh legs of Carly Vaccaro. And she dances her way to the front of the net, but there to make the save was Miller. And NYIT racing back out of their own end. And now crossing midfield, that's Brooke Basso. Basso being chased by Forrester and turns the other way. Pass over now for Chaika. Ashley Chaika. Next with Milano. And now for Geiger. And Geiger holding it. And watch there by Ali Poplar over to Milano. And now they'll try it with Chaika once again. Now on this side of the field, Cuevas. Angelina Cuevas will leave it. And Geiger bounces it over to Cuevas. Her pass connects, and shot coming. Brooks, wow, what a save there. Some huge saves being made here by Bridget Sutter. Although the Bears get the rebound, now here's another look in front. They leave Cuevas wide open on this side. I don't know if they see her as the Bears player goes down to the field. And Lexi Ruiz. <laughs> Put it back in for the visitors. It's 
<laughs> and the officials talking to one another down there in the field before they'll let play restart. Players are all ready and just waiting for the officials to give the green light. <laughs> and now they seem to have it. And play restarts. Milano to Geiger. Geiger looks at Milano, keeps it, and sends it right into a high traffic area. Milano pushes it out towards the sideline to Angelina Cuevas. And we have another whistle stopping play. And this makes up for what was a fast moving first half. As we are quote unquote only 9.54 into the second half. And an opportunity now for the Bears to lead four to three. And Cueva scores. She beats Bridget Sutter to the far side. And NYIT goes into a 5-3 to three lead, 9 minutes 56 seconds into the Roll second half. Roll into technology number 2, Angelina Cuevas. And for Cuevas, that's her sixth goal of the season. Right in the heart of downtown, just a few blocks from campus, come stay in luxury at the Embassy Suites downtown, 513 South Florida Avenue in Tampa. Amanda Rom trotting onto the field for the Spartans. We'll take this draw against Melissa Milano. QT in an unfamiliar position now, at least as it relates to this game. Trailing by two. Your trusted Tampa Subaru dealer is Mastro Subaru, located at 6402 West Hillsborough Avenue. At Mastro Subaru, their slogan is, Our Reputation Rides With You. And that one controlled by Amanda Rahm. And there's two Bears players on her. And the whistle goes against NYIT. And so Rahm puts it in play and sends it to the far sideline as Rahm runs off the field and is replaced by Carly Vaccaro as the Spartans push it deep into the Bears' end of the field, Caraway with it. Up top, Ali Poplar, two defenders, so she sends it the other way. And now back down in behind the Bears' net. Maggie Gladden on the near side. Caraway passed way up top to Vaccaro and sends it over for Poplar, who quickly pushes it down behind the net. And UT will try the other side, Sweeney with it. Shannon Sweeney to Forrester. Over to Poplar. Poplar looking to make something happen here. Tries the slot and tough defense there. That carries Nineke. And now Shannon Sweeney has it knocked from her stick. Can't get to it. And the call goes <coughs> against the Bears. And Shannon Sweeney puts it back in. Caraway over to Forrester. Caroline Forrester turns and a flag comes out. We'll call here against NYIT. <laughs> and an opportunity for Caroline Forrester. Forrester shoots that one wide. And the Bears are there to control the rebound. Heavy pressure by the Spartans now. As Aaron Lankowitz tried to start that one up. And they'll push it to the other side. Now cutting up to the center. And they gain midfield. That's Kim Geiger with it now. Geiger being watched closely by Maggie Gladden. And another whistle. As actually Chenka was about to cross the Spartan line. And so it's Geiger ahead to Chenka. Chenka finds Ruiz. Ruiz in the near corner. Back up, <coughs> Ashley Chica to Ruiz in the slot. There's a shot, nice save made by Sutter. 
on the shot by Shannon Donovan. Sutter goes right behind her own net. Looking for some help, has it here. With Alexis Scandillo who misses, and a turnover by UT. So possession for the Bears as they hustle it right back in. Lexi Ruiz on the run, and Ruiz taken down by Abby Cacagna. And Ruiz. A little slow before she gets up and now bent over and restores her protective eyewear. And in the meantime, over on the far side of the field, we are going to get a penalty called here against Abby Cacagna. At Firehouse Subs, their subs are made the firefighter way. Served steaming hot and loaded with the finest fresh sliced meats and cheeses. Located at 2617 West Kennedy Boulevard, Firehouse, founded by firemen. Penalty, Tampa's number 15, Abby Cacagna, so two minutes for dangerous Cacagna play. Cacagna gets two minutes for dangerous play. In a tough position for UT. Who already trails by two and now must kill a two minute penalty. And there's a pass, and going down to the field was Ruiz. She said, I just finished dusting myself off after the Picanha hit. And now it looks like Scadillo's going to go off as well. So the Spartans digging an even deeper hole now, as there's still 139 remaining in the Picanha penalty. And Alexis Scadillo is going to put them two players short. <coughs> it's coming with 17-15 remaining here in the second half. And now the Bears put it in play in the person that carries Nineke, who has one goal and one assist, being watched back there by Stevenson. Rizola goes back to help out now. Caroline Forster calling out defensive assignments. A lot of extra room out there for NYIT. UT being two players short, a spin move and shot not taken. Carries on, the goal crease extended, and now heading back behind the net, Zanecki. Pass out in front, shot coming, Sutter makes the save. And Bridget Sutter holds on to the rebound. As the first penalty against Abby Cacagna, now down to 56 seconds remaining on it. And Sutter puts it in play with a pass to Claire Swanson. Swanson. Tries to split the defenders, does. Her pass connects up ahead. Caroline Forster had it knocked from her stick, but the official right there to make the call against Ardito. And now Forster pushes it up ahead. Mallory Wines in the far corner to Natalie Caraway. And the Spartans obviously will kill lots of clock here. As there's still 27 seconds left in the Picanha penalty. There's a difference of 21 seconds in the two penalties. And now you see... The Bears going back the other way with an opportunity and a nice defensive play there. And a whistle, great hustle by Paige Johnson. And it looks like we're going to get a penalty now against Alyssa Milano. So with Nine seconds in the Cacagna penalty and 30 seconds in the call against Alexis Cadillo. We get a two-minute penalty against the Bears' Alyssa Milano. They take their leading goal scorer off the field. As Amanda Rom play continuing with UT in possession. Rom and Natalie Caraway have whistled stops play here. And the Kanye penalty had expired. There's just five seconds left 
and the call against Alexis Scudillo. And so in five seconds, UT will have a power play for one minute, 31 seconds. Well, we knew this would be a close game, and I don't know that too many people would have believed if you told them it would only be five to three halfway through the second half. As play carries on in behind the Bears net, it's Claire Swanson back there. Amanda Rahm, UT back at full strength. And Caraway tries the slot. Two defenders turn her away. And here's Mallory Wines quickly over to Eber. Eber looking down low, connects down there with Amanda Rahm, pushes it right back in front. It doesn't connect with Eber, a ground ball. And a bunch of them battle for it. The Bears started to come out of the pack with it. And UT had picked it up initially. Kayla Kosubinski hits the deck, and the call goes against NYIT. 42 seconds left on the Spartans' power play. And this is Natalie Carraway into the corner now. That's Claire Swanson back there. And Swanson gets it right back. And passes it out in front, Graham Eber. And a great save made there by Ashley Miller. Stand her up. UT making changes as Kosubinski goes off. And Paige Johnson steps on. And three seconds left, two seconds. The Bears back at full strength. So both teams kill off their penalties. Claire Swanson, looking like she's playing basketball there, trying to draw the charge. And a pass over now for Ashley Chaika. In the middle now, that's Cuevas. Cuevas has one of the Bears' five goals. And on the far side of the field with it is Milano. Milano, who has two of them, starts towards the net, shoots, Sutter makes the save. And whistles stop play here with 13.07 left in the second half. And now we're going to get another penalty against the Spartans. And this one will be Cage Johnson. Another two minute call. Cage Johnson, two minutes for pushing with 13.07 left here in the second half. The Spartans. Now, the next penalty for Tampa's number 26, Paige Johnson. They need to find the back of the net. They've been outscored 2 to 1 here in the second half. And that is a non releasable penalty. As Cuevas sends it up top. Geiger back to Cuevas again. And in front, they score. Bridget Setter made the save and I think lost control of it and dropped it across the goal line. So the Bears take a three goal lead goal, now. New York Institute of Technology, number six, Alyssa Milano. As Milano gets her third goal in game. And as I mentioned, that's a non-releasable penalty against Paige Johnson. So the power play goal is still 138 left on the Johnson call. We're at 12.44 left here in the second half. Godfrey Hotel, formerly Bay Harbor, is located at 7700 West Courtney Campbell Causeway in Tampa, offering a special rate to all UT supporters and guests. Godfrey Hotel in Humana on Courtney Campbell Causeway. Two of the officials talking things over just outside the Bears line. And now joining the discussion is Kate Geiger. And we might 
reminder that our next broadcast comes your way on Friday night, a 7.30 face-off as Alabama Huntsville provides the opposition when the Spartans close out their seven-game homestand. And currently, their shirt collars are getting a little tight as their six-game winning streak is potentially in jeopardy here. Taking the Bears goal off the scoreboard and done so because of an illegal stick. So the Spartans catch a break there. As I said, they've shot themselves in the foot here quite a bit with all these penalties that they've taken. And that's the good news. The bad news is that there is still 138 left in the Paige Johnson penalty. Give it up to the Spartan team of physicians of Florida Orthopedic Institute, Florida's largest <laughs> orthopedic group, and to doctors Selman and Gasser and their sports medicine team, keeping our players active and safe on and off the field with their ortho urgent care just minutes away in South Tampa. And that's Abby Kakanya on the run on the far side of the field. Kakanya. Stopping on a dime as we have a whistle stopping the clock once again. And now play resumes. And the far corner. And Claire Swanson was calling for it wide open in front of the net. And Carly Vaccaro opts for this side of the field instead to and Caraway up top is Swanson. That's Mallory Wines, fires a pass into the corner. And now Crawford being chased. Crawford pass in front, doesn't connect, but Caraway's there to pick it up. And another whistle as we're down to 54 seconds remaining in the Paige Johnson penalty. And we may have another one coming up here against the Bears. <laughs> as it looks like Lexi Ruiz will sit down for two minutes. <laughs> well, a lot of calls here in this game as the Spartans have 54 seconds left to kill on the Paige Johnson penalty. And in the meantime, now the Caraway IT's number is called back in the play, leaving it to Rachel Crawford. Check to the head. So check to the head, by the way, the official call against Aaron Lankowitz. <laughs> and Caraway scores! And Natalie Caraway, 14 <laughs> seconds into that Aaron Lankowitz penalty. Team one player short with 1146 in the second half. Caraway draws the Spartans back within one. It's five to four. And for Natalie Caraway, that's her eighth goal of the season. That goal that was called back for the Bears could end up looming large. As Alyssa Milano, player of the Thunch Award. Taking off the board due to an illegal stick. She goes out there for this draw against Amanda Rahm. University Dining Services by Sodexo allows you to choose from 27 dining stations serving breakfast, lunch, dinner, late night, and snacks. The official concessionaire of UT Athletics is Sodexo Campus Dining. Visit the UT website and check dining services for their variety and hours. So the situation is that the power play goal, I'm sorry, I should say the, the Natalie Caraway goal, the teams reach one player short, that did release Aaron Lankowitz, but the Bears actually go back on the power play, being that Johnson's was a non-releasable. So there's still 31 seconds left in the Paige Johnson penalty, as the Bears having trouble getting it out as you see there, the Spartans 
On the spot to pick it up is Carly Vaccaro. And the Spartans cross the Bears line now. Good play here by Vaccaro as she sends it over for Rachel Crawford. Crawford into the far corner. Crawford in behind Ashley Miller, the goaltender. And now racing out in front. They shot, they score! Maggie Gladden ties it up. The Spartans get a goal with still two seconds left on the Paige Johnson penalty. And it's a whole new game at 5-5. Unassisted goal to Tampa's number 33, Maggie Gladden. Maggie Gladden. <laughs> Have given up two straight by the home team. And we sit five to five with 11.08 to go here in the second half. Sailport Waterfront Suites in Tampa is Tampa's only all waterfront, all suite resort located on beautiful Rocky Point Island, just minutes from <coughs> UT. Rom and Milano once again has the Spartan sideline. Starting to get excited. Milano on the run. Cuts in, scores! <laughs> Melissa Milano single handedly. She controls the draw and takes it down the field. Puts it behind Bridget Sutter. So no sooner did the Spartans get the game tied. Number six, Alyssa Milano. As Alyssa Milano get back the goal that was taken away from her, so to speak. Now getting her third of the night. Milano at 17 goals on the season now. And she needs one more point to hit 40 of the season. Rom, right back once again for the draw against Milano. And Milano able to knock it down, but right into the stick of Abby <coughs> Kikanya, who's chased by three Bears players. And they knock it from her possession. And it's awarded to UT as Kikanya sends it in to Ali Poplar. Connects up ahead with Forrester. Caroline Forrester on the run. Into the corner to Caraway. Long pass up top with Poplar. And now Sweeney sends it down in behind the net. Crawford bounces out in front. Crawford leaves it for Poplar. And now here's Natalie Caraway. Caraway tries to get inside, takes a bounce shot. That one's going to go out of play. Natalie Caraway has. One goal tonight. Five different Spartans players have scored. As Caroline Forster has it up top now. Sends it over for Vaccaro. Carly Vaccaro weighing her options. And this is Shannon Sweeney. Over for Poplar. Now Caroline Forster being watched. Closely there by Ashley Chaika. And here's Vaccaro once again. Caraway. Looked down to her left, holds on to it, and goes the other way, but puts it back in front. Maggie Gladden's shot is knocked down. And the Bears able to get the rebound. And they work to get back out of their own end and gain midfield. Crossing midfield is Kim Geiger being chased by Carly Vaccaro. Geiger with a spin move crosses the Tampa line over to Cuevas. Wave us up ahead to Milano. In the corner now. <coughs> Zanecki sends it back to Milano and all the way up top with Geiger, and she'll send it over to Chaika. Geiger. It's a Shannon Donovan. And back to Chaika now. And over here towards the near corner, Angelina Cuevas 
Pass in front. Geiger doesn't have a shot. Has to take it down behind the net. Here's Naneki. Carries Naneki with one goal and one assist tonight. And this is Shannon Donovan over to Cuevas. Cuevas on the run, being watched by two Spartans defenders. And Geiger with it now. Motioning with her head. And following that lead, Ashley Chaika gets it from her. Sending it over to Cuevas. And she'll reset up top with Geiger once again. Over to Cuevas. Cuevas looks. Passes inside and lost it. And I think the Bears were expecting a whistle. The play carries on. It's kicked at. And they get it back to the Bears as Ruiz brings it in. 7.56 to go in the second half. 6-5. NYIT in the lead. Zneneki. Pass over to Milano. Up top for Geiger. Geiger sends it back to Milano. And now Milano. Two times in a row, Ashley Chike has been told where to go by one of her teammates, Nod. And here's Cuevas now. Cuevas tries to split the defense. And UT lets her in enough where she gets a shot off, but that one goes out of play just underneath the scoreboard. And the Bears quickly put it back in. And now's a shot coming. They score! It trickles just across the goal line. It looked like Bridget Sutter might have gotten a piece of it. But it trickles through, and the Bears get a little breathing room. They had led 5-3 to three before the Spurs tied it back up 5-9. Number 7, Shannon Donovan, the assist to number 10, Carrie Danecki. Now they get two goals of their own to make it 7-5. to five. That's Shannon Donovan. That's her second goal game. And Carrie Danecki gets her third point of the night. And she picks up the assist. The Spartans call a timeout with 7.15 left here in the second half. Located at the edge of campus on Kennedy, the Outpost offers an affordable classic menu. If you're a loyal Tampa Spartan fan, ladies and gentlemen, please turn your attention to the video board for our Word Scramble, sponsored by Krispy Kreme. If you know what the word is, tweet it to at Spartacus UT for your chance to win a prize. Calling this time out. Talking things over with our players. This has been a back and forth game all night. As I mentioned, 3 and 2 was our halftime score. 4 to 3. There is outscoring the Spartans so far in the second half. Bridget Sutter has really been busy tonight. This game could be a lot bigger margin than two goals if it wasn't for her play. 15 saves for Sutter. Close to 53 minutes of play thus far. Shots on goal 22 to 9 in favor of NYIT. mentioned five different Spartans players have scored. Blair Swanson, Natalie Carraway, Allie Poplar, Shannon Sweeney, and Maggie Gladden. Five of the seven NYIT goals have come from Melissa Milano and Shannon Donovan. Single tallies for the visitors off the sticks of Gary Zdenecki and Angelina Cuevas says that timeout is ending down in the field. The Bears players back out there, the Spartans about to break their huddle. For generations, Krispy Kreme has been serving delicious donuts and coffee. This is the nearest Krispy Kreme on West Kennedy. Krispy Kreme is serving hot donuts now. <clears throat> Allie Poplar and the official about to initiate this draw between those two. 
And let's see how the Spartans come out of this timeout and the talk from their coach, Kelly Gallagher. Abby Kakanya chases it down. And indeed, the Spartans are awarded the possession there, although Kakanya being chased and a loose ball picked up by Stevenson. She needs help <laughs> and gets it over on the far side of the field in the person of Kristen Frizzol. And a pass up ahead. We have another whistle. Possession will remain with UT, however. As we're down to just 6.46 remaining here in the second half. More whistles against NYIT as Kayla Kosubinski dodged some sticks heading towards the NYIT line as play continues down behind the Bears net. Caraway with it. Caraway as Maggie Gladden flashed out in front. They send a pass over to the far side instead. And working awfully hard there, Kosubinski. And a whistle going against the Bears. <coughs> and so Kayla Kosubinski. With an opportunity now against Golton or Ashley Miller. And Kosubinski scores! Goal Tampa, number five, Kayla Kosubinski. Goal of the year. They don't go anywhere. The Spartans cut the deficit back to one. It's seven to six with 621 remaining. draw controls become that much more important as possession is huge at this point. Although one could argue that with as many turnovers as we've seen, even if you don't control the draw, there's a good chance that you're going to get it back. A combined 46 turnovers between these two teams tonight. And as I mentioned, still over six minutes left to play here. And that one will be corralled for the Bears by Anne-Marie Ardito. And she hustles off the field. And as play carries on with Shannon Donovan in possession for NYIT. And this is Kim Geiger. Chaika now. So Geiger once again. And here's Chaika. On the near side, that's Angelina Cuevas. Watched by Stevenson, it pushes into the corner. Louise, the other side, a pass out in front, shot goes wide. And back there to pick that one up was Ruiz, a loose ball, they chase after it. And Chica got there first. And this is Ruiz now. Good hustle by Claire Swanson. For UT going after that loose ball, although NYIT got to it and still in possession as Cuevas goes down to the field and that one rolls right to Bridget Sutter. And the official says, Let's stop play here at 5 11 and put the Bears player behind the net for the restart. And they do. And Sutter outlets connects with Swanson. Blair Swanson connects up ahead at midfield. Mallory Wines dropped it, now picks it back up and sends it up to the Bears line. And racing down into the NYIT end. Here's a shot taken and bodies fall in front of the net as the shot went wide by Kayla Kosubinski. And the Spartans give it right back as Miller is there on the spot. And there's those turnovers that I just talked about. Kelly McQuail crosses midfield now for the Bears. Up ahead to Ruiz. Lexi Ruiz and a whistle as we're going to get a timeout taken by the Bears. Their head coach, Gary Hendricks, <laughs> wants to talk things over here.
average combined 31 goals per game. And 31 has been turned around. 13 between the two of them with just over four minutes left in regulation here. And let's see what the Bears show coming out of that timeout. And the conversation with your head coach, Kerry Andrus, as they work it around the perimeter here. And Abby Kukanya wanted to try to gamble there with the interception. Play carries on, though. Pass in front, and that one, they score! Looks like it was going to go wide, and they're able to bounce it to the far side of the net. That's Bridget Sutter. And a huge goal for NYIT. They go in front, 8-6. Kim Geiger. Kim Geiger. the goal. Seven remaining. Amanda Rahm and Alyssa Milano go head to head once again in this draw. And it comes out and is free. Kicked at, and now Rahm comes out of the pack with it. Sends it to Caroline Forrester sprinting ahead. Forrester across the Bears line to Eber. Eber back in front. Forrester not able to get a shot off. Connects with the pass now to Sweeney. And Sweeney looking down low, holds it, and opts instead for Amanda Rahm up top. Over on the near side, Graham Eber for Sweeney. And a good test here for the Spartan team. As Crawford battling in front and a whistle stopping play with 3.11 left in the second half. Rachel Crawford. With a big chance now, one-on-one -on -one against goaltender Ashley Miller. The official <coughs> placing Caroline Forrester and Brooke Basso accordingly. Yeah. And now here goes Rachel Crawford. And Rachel Crawford stopped, and the rebound rolls to the near corner. And it's picked up by the Bears. All kinds of pressure being applied by UT here. As Lankowitz drops mm -hmm. the ball and picked up by the Spartans. Forrester breaking in. Can't get the shot away. Two defenders on her gets it to Crawford. <coughs> up top for Poplar. The Spartans catch a break there as they're down to just 244 left here, and they trail 8-6. to six. And a whistle as going down for UT was Rachel Crawford. And they put it back in play up to Graham Eber. Eber is bumped. A pass over. She gets it right back. Eber to Caraway. Caraway in front. Forrester scores! <laughs> Caroline Forrester, who has had a good season, 14 goals in the next game. Caroline Forrester, the assist for number 24, Natalie Caraway. Her first goal of the night as Natalie Caraway gets the assist. And the Spartans absolutely will not quit as Natalie Caraway with the 2.9 now. Goal and an assist, and all of a sudden, 227 remaining doesn't look so bad. The Spartans need at least one to get this tied up. And then another huge draw here between Alyssa Milano and Amanda Rahm as it comes out. And initially it looked like it was going to be picked up by the Bears. And the call goes against NYIT, so possession to the home team. As here's Abby Kakanya with it. Kakanya switches hands. Pass connects with Rom. 
Amanda Rahm over to Allie Poplar. And the Bears out to meet her. Poplar may need help, finds it on the far side. <laughs> and they race down towards the corner. And all the way deep in behind the NYIT net, a pass out in front didn't connect. It's on the ground. And Forrester able to get there for the Spartans. 147 left now. Forrester, who just scored, will pass over to Amanda Rahm. Rahm looking in front, holds on to it, now sends a pass over to the other side. <laughs> There's a pass to Forrester and Caraway now over to Graham Eber. Eber wants to bounce inside. Two defenders there. Has to make the pass over to Sweeney. And now in the far corner, quickly they push it behind the net. Amanda Rahm back there. Rahm wants the front of the net. Can't get there. And it's turned over as the Bears pick it up with 108 left. And they start up the near sideline, crossing their own line. It's Kelly McQuail on the run quickly across midfield. To Lexi Ruiz and a whistle. <laughs> and if the Spartans are going to come back and tie this, it's going to be from a short handed perspective as Amanda Rahm takes a two minute penalty. And now the Bears put it in. Splitting the defenders is Geiger. Ruiz. Down into the corner to Zanecki. Here's Lexi Ruiz again. And UT <coughs> is short a player as Amanda Rahm. Seated over in the penalty area. And now a stick <coughs> comes up on Kim Geiger. And now the Spartans are going to go two players short as Allie Poplar. Got the stick up too high on Kim Geiger. And so a two minute penalty against Allie Poplar. And this all coming with just 35 and a half seconds remaining in the second half. And the Bears with a two player advantage here as Geiger has it, passes to Ruiz. 20 seconds left now. Ruiz chased into the corner by Stevenson. Ruiz. And now on the run, that's Brooke Basso being bumped. And the clock is going to run out on the Spartans in their six-game winning streak. As the horn goes to end the game, and the NYIT Bears who came in ranked number 19, <coughs> knock off the number 15 Tampa Spartans, 8-7. to seven. And with a final score of 8-7, to seven, the Spartans who are trying to come back. Wins the game. And On behalf of both the University of Tampa and the New York Institute of Technology, thank you for coming to today's it's game. The Spartans will be back Popper. on Friday when they welcome the Chargers of Alabama Huntsville so right here at the Namoli Family Stadium at 7.30 p.m. Everybody have a great night and, and a safe their drive one home. Record to five and two, while the Spartans fall to 7-3. and three. The leading scorer for the winners tonight was Alyssa Milano, who had three goals. And they also got a two-goal effort from Shannon Donovan. And for the Spartans, seven different players scoring goals tonight. And the losing cause, Caroline Forrester, Meg Gladden, Shannon Sweeney, Allie Poplar, Kayla Kosminski, Natalie Carraway, and Claire Swanson. Carraway also adding an assist. Worth noting for the victors, Harry Snedecki finishes with three points on one goal and two assists, a multiple point game also for Angelina Cuevas as she gets one goal and one assist. Final shots on goal, 23 to 12 in favor of the Bears. So 15 saves for Bridget Sutter. And at the other end of the field, just five saves for Ashley Miller, but it's enough to propel their team to an eight to seven victory. Reminder of the Spartans are still at home if you're in the West Central Florida area. Come out and support the team in person. Watch the game here at the Holy Family Athletic and Intramural Complex on Friday night at 7.30. Alabama Huntsville provides the opposition. Otherwise, we will have that game for you here on TampaSpartans.tv. I'm Bruce Wozniak thanking you for watching. Again, our final score, NYIT 8 and Tampa 7.
Have a good night.